come. To this really fun tutorial. I have motion. So just follow me into After Effects. Whoa! Today we're diving deep into the electrifying world of compositing in After Effects. We're talking motion tracking, rotoscoping, some serious 3D magic and a truckload of After Effects tips and tricks you won't find just anywhere. You just saw three epic scenes in the intro, right? Well, I'm going to walk you through each one, stepping up the game with every shot. We'll start simple and then unleash some truly advanced features. And by the end, you won't just be able to create these exact shots, you'll be a compositing master ready to tackle anything. And if you stick around for the final shot, oh boy, you're in for a treat. We're talking 3D tracking your scene, stabilizing everything in full 3D, seamlessly integrating your rotoscope self and even reanimating your movements with realistic shadows. Impossible, you may say? Nah, just clever thinking. So buckle up, because here we go. A quick heads up, that last shot is next level. If you're new to this, maybe just watch the first two. But if you're ready to push your skills, prepare to learn some advanced workflows even the pros sometimes miss out on. To make this super easy to follow, we're starting from scratch. I even shot this on a smartphone so absolutely everyone can recreate it. When you're shooting, just make sure you always see the floor in your frame. Trust me, it makes a huge difference for that wah factor later. So once you're happy with your footage, simply import it into After Effects and I'm going straight to duplicating my main clip twice. I'll name one camera track and the other one roto. On the camera track layer, I'm applying the camera tracker. And here's a pro tip. Immediately set it to advanced analysis. Why? Because it tracks in the background, letting us jump straight into our next step while it does its thing. And you guessed it, we're diving straight into rotoscoping ourselves out. So double click your roto layer and we're tackling this with the roto brush tool. At the moment we're on version 3.0, which means it's incredibly fast and accurate. With the stroke tool I paint on the parts I want to keep and hold on alt while painting to remove any unwanted selections. There's also a refine edge tool for hair and fine details, but guess what? I was clever enough to wear this cap while shooting, so we're keeping it simple. Quick tip number one. You don't have to start at the very beginning. Pick a frame where After Effects AI has the most clear information to identify. And quick tip number two, I paint separate strokes for specific parts like trousers, shirt, head, legs and so on. This makes the result far more accurate because if something goes off, the AI only has to predict that specific tricky part and not a whole human. As always, I'm too lazy to go through all the frames manually and I trust the AI. So I just click freeze and wait. It'll calculate back to the beginning and then forward to the end all by itself. So once that's done, let's head back to the main comp. Time to check our roto and it's looking great, right? And we can even improve it directly within the effect. We want to add motion blur to our roto to make it look super realistic and definitely decontaminate the edge colors. This removes any color spill from your original background, making it blend seamlessly onto the new one. And let's render this out. This way, After Effects doesn't have to calculate it constantly, leading to less frustration and a much faster workflow. Just make sure to use a format with an alpha channel, which means transparency. I am using ProRes 444 and make sure RGB plus alpha channel. And don't forget to switch out your layer once rendering is finished. Speaking of finished, by now our 3D track should also be done. Yes, indeed. So, let's quickly scrub through this and remove any wrong trackers. And by that I mean points that aren't sitting on static objects. In this case, that means any markers that landed on me. 
just lasso around them and hit delete. Easy peasy. Once that's done, let's define our floor. I'm looking for a point in time where I have a lot of markers on this road and maybe also on the grass since it's mainly a flat floor. Now right click and select create solid and camera. The solid is now in 3D space and I'm directly rescaling it to match the road and the foreground. And here's a neat trick. You can use this solid as a track mat on your footage and boom, you have a hole in your floor. How cool is that? Well, I guess you expected that. But Next, let's create our platforms. Those cool spots where I'm going to be standing. So for that, I select the camera tracker effect again because now I can see the markers once more. I'm selecting points around the area where I want to place my platforms later. Again, create a solid for each platform and scale it to your desired size. And just like we did with the floor, I'm using each solid as a separate alpha mat on a duplicate of the footage. You may be asking, why not do all of this on one layer? Great question. We may need the position of the platforms later. And hey, we're actually getting somewhere. In combination with our rotor on top, we are now seemingly jumping from platform to platform. And since all of this is now in true 3D space, we can just add any 3D objects we want. And everything will react perfect to our camera. By using this workflow with separate layers for separate platforms, we can easily use the position of those solids to precisely place our 3D objects. So let me show you. First, we need something solid to stand on. So let's search for stage truss on Envato Elements because that's my go-to for incredible assets like this. Well, we'll actually be using Envato Elements for way more today than just 3D assets, but more on that in a moment. All I can say for now is that I also have an affiliate link to Envato Elements in the video description below. So if you want to use the exact same amazing assets I am using, you can grab them there. And while we're here, let's just search for some more assets to fill that hole we created. Maybe a 3D landscape or a cliff or perhaps even like a basement. Let's try out a few different options and see what works best for our scene. Back in After Effects, I can just drag and drop these right in. For the trusses, as I mentioned, I'm simply copying over the position from our 3D solid layer and we're already a huge step forward. Now, let's add an environment light and an HDRI that looks similar to the surroundings in our original scene. We can then select the HDRI in our environment light settings, and it will not only illuminate our scene realistically, but also provide beautiful reflections in our 3D objects. Pooh. Now, let's bring in one of the assets we downloaded for our well, underground scene. This time we'll copy the position of our floor layer and paste it onto this new asset. Hey, here's a super cool trick. You can always temporarily enable your original floor layer. Since your 3D objects interact with each other, you can directly get a much better sense of the depth and precise positioning for your new elements. And the last trick before we jump to the next scene, if you create a shape layer, make it 3D and copy the properties of your 3D solid to it, you can now bevel or extrude this layer to get a much more realistic three-dimensional platform. Plus, you can play with its material settings to get your desired look. Okay, up to shot number two. Let's make this quick and dirty because here's only one major difference. Instead of using a 3D scene, I'm using a video. And you guessed it, it's a lava video. Again, I found this one on Envato Elements while searching through their immense video stock library. Seriously, it's a gold mine. I'm just the floor layer, copying its properties and pasting them onto the lava layer. Okay, looks cool, but the layer is too small and simply scaling it up will make it look fake. The perfect match for the motion tile effect. So apply it to the layer and now you can expand its height or width and mirror it for seamless results. And hey, if you animate the offset, that lava will even flow in one direction. 
And as the cherry on top, I also added a turbulent displace effect and animated the evolution. So it looks even more like lava, because it is lava. And now the rest is up to your imagination. A fence, a stop sign, a raven. You find all of that and so much more on Envato Elements as well. Okay, now you've seen me use Envato and honestly, it's my secret weapon. If you're serious about content creation, whether it's video, motion design, graphics, 3D, or even music, Envato is an absolute game changer. It's a massive library packed with millions of stock videos, music tracks, sound effects, photos, graphic templates, fonts, web templates, 3D assets, hey, and so much more. And all for an affordable subscription. And here is something really awesome. They are constantly innovating. So Envato Elements now even offers fantastic AI tools, helping you generate ideas, text to voice, images, or even videos faster than ever before. And I'll be doing a dedicated tutorial on those very soon. So stay tuned. And if you want to unlock this creative powerhouse, you can find my affiliate link to Envato Elements in the description below. And it supports my channel and gives you access to everything you need to supercharge your project. But now, on to the last example, where we go absolutely crazy. The plan is to position our rotoscoped out version of me directly in 3D space, so we can animate the camera around myself or just have a static shot, so whatever you want. So let's enable the 3D switch for our roto layer. And voila, didn't I promise you a crazy shot? Well, we need a solution for this. And there's an easy way because right now I'm filmed in 3D, but my movement is already a three dimensional movement. So we have two times 3D, basically 6D, but we need to get rid of three of the Ds. So let's just parent the roto layer to the camera. Bam! That brings us back to 3D, but still somewhere lost in space. But stick with me, though this is actually pretty intuitive. Let's just reset the position to zero. Well, except for the set depth, the 3D position, and of course the rotation. And we're back to normal. Now, with scaling, we can make myself full screen again. All set up for animation. Because now we want to move ourselves in 3D space in the same way we walked around on the road in real life. And as a little helper, we can activate the non 3D roto version as a reference. Now we know exactly where our feet should interact with the floor. Well, exactly here. Let's just pull out a guide by hitting R and dragging it out. Now scale up the footage until you see where it intersects with the floor. Then, with the set position, move it back or forth until it aligns with your actual foot position. In this case, with our guide. And now let's just scale it into position one more time. Let's add a keyframe for scale and position and scrub through this. And this actually goes way faster than expected. And it makes it way more fun when setting up light. So let's add a parallel light. This mimics sunlight. So it's just intensity and direction. And I hope by now you understand why we're doing this. We get real shadows in 3D space and we can position anything we want in front or behind because, well, all of this is now 3D. All of it. And let's just do one more pair of keyframes to fully grasp it. So here I'm landing after a jump. Scale this up to see the interaction, slide the set position into place and scale it down again so it matches our reference. But wait, that means we now also have control over our camera. Hmm. Let's take a look at a custom camera view. Ha! Yes, we can now animate this camera. For example, more of a drone shot flying further away to sell the idea that we are standing on a really high truss construction or simply smooth out the animation you did while shooting? Now you truly are in full control. 
And with this impressive workflow, I'm going to end today's tutorial. I truly hope you had fun, learned a ton and are ready to overcome your fear of heights or at least your fear of complex compositing. Yeah.